This is Mises Weekends with your host, Jeff Dice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to our weekend show, Mises Weekends. We're joined by two very special guests, both of whom were here this past week attending our Mises University week. Uh, both are from Venezuela, and uh, these two gentlemen gave a presentation at Mises U about the current situation in Venezuela, and we thought we'd dig a little deeper. Uh, I'd like to introduce, we're joined by Professor Rafael Acevedo um, from Venezuela, and also Luis Soroco, I'm going to say, from Venezuela. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for coming to Mises U. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you for giving this, us the opportunity to be here with you. Really, we, we in, in Venezuela don't have the opportunities like this because you know the, the libertarian thought is not a is not supported yeah. you know, in in Latin American countries. So, gentlemen, before we get into talking about Venezuela, I'd like to know how both of you came to uh, be libertarians, to be Misesians, okay. to come to Mises University. Okay. Um, well, each one of us on, on our own mm -hmm. uh, happened to meet very good people, you know, in our ways, um, friends and professors as well. Um, actually, Rafael met uh, Professor Francisco Velandria from, in Venezuela and Jose Mora. Uh, uh, while well, he was studying his master of science in economics, okay, and and I and I met Professor Hugo Faria, who he was my professor, economics professor in um, while I was studying my master of science in finance, and and he is now a professor in, at the University of, of Miami. He migrated, he left Venezuela, and uh, they were people that really loved free markets. They they were defenders of free markets, and um, were very uh, influential. Uh, for us, very, you know, uh, we, from that moment on, we, we started reading about, we actually, the word Hayek, the word, uh, the, the name Mises or Rothbard, I, I've never heard those names before. Uh, I heard them <laughs> when I started studying with uh, Hugo Faria. And, and, and from that moment on, we, we you know, started uh, studying about them, about Hayek, Mises, and, and, and all those guys. And, and started supporting free markets. We really believe that that's the solution of our problems in Venezuela. And, and actually, I, <laughs> I know about the Mises Institute because of Rafael. I, I didn't know about Mises Institute. Rafael told me, hey, there is an institution there in Alabama that, that okay, let, let's try, let's apply. Okay, how about you? Well, uh, <laughs> I was looking for, for Google uh, for, for reading so about uh, Hayek Mises and I, I found I found the the Mises Institute, and really was a, a very amazing experience to 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 meet the the website. Uh, I had the opportunity to 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 read a lot of a lot of books, and and well, we say, hey, Louis, I think that the, there is a way, a real way, to mm -hmm. the freedom in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Look at this website. Come apply for for the Mrs. University. We apply for the Mrs. University in 2016, uh, but we couldn't be here because of some problems, some troubles, uh, financial financial tr troubles. But well, we we, we could be here uh, right now, uh, and yes, we we think uh, we have to to work for for these ideas in Venezuela. Because this is the the only way that Venezuela will will improve its economy and and can overthrow this dictatorship. Um, I don't know how to say this, but uh, really, really, we we engage with these ideas, okay? And we are working for that. So, talk a little bit about the presentation you gave and some of the day to day current realities that Venezuelans face that people in the U.S. might not be aware of. Okay. Uh, can I start from the, from, from the past? Sure. Just to know, to, to give you a, a picture of, of why we uh, got to this point. Um, we think um, in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, up to 1950s, we experienced very high levels of growth, economic growth, we uh, we had very high levels of economic freedom as citizens, as common citizens in Venezuela. But w the 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 outstanding feature of the of those years of those decades was that out of the five presidents we have, four were dictators. So it's kind of a you know 
we had very high levels of economic freedom, but we didn't have civil and political rights. They, they were very diminished uh, by those dictators. And when we finally embraced democracy in 1958, when the last uh, dictatorship was overthrown, uh, well, we started having some civil and political rights like uh, freedom of the press, universal, universal suffrage, etc. But our levels of economic freedom started to decline because the political elite that came got into power democratically, um, well, I, we think they, they didn't like private property. They, they were, yeah, the father of our democracy was a communist transformed into a social democrat. As I said in the presentation, right. uh, he he founded the Communist Party in Costa Rica, and 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 you know uh, he and his colleagues created a constitution that that um, was hostile to private property since that moment. And and when you see some uh, economic indicators, to, you see that that there is no uh, that's not a coincidence. He started with those you know uh, like eroding those ec economic freedoms. And, and we started seeing uh, a uh, uh, huge increase in, in our uh, poverty rates and the exclusion. Uh, there were uh, many exclusionary institutions up to the point uh, of 1998 when Chavez uh, was elected president. And you know the story, Rafael knows better the story, but uh, what we're living now from that moment, uh, everything got worse, uh, worse, worse and worse. Um, during the first years of Chavez, probably that was not noticed by people because because of the high the high oil prices, and and it was the problem the problem with Venezuelans. Uh, I think we, we we think that oil is a curse, and what we respond to them is like uh, oil is not a curse. The curse is the state ownership of the oil. That's the problem we we're having. We had in the past, and we're having now. Yes, look at the the results of uh, of the policies implemented by Hugo Chavez and Maduro's has been very very cruel, very very hard to the to the people. In example, the minimum wage. If you if you know that from May 1999, when the when Hugo Chavez uh, the, um, ordered the first the first uh, increment for the minimum wage to July 2017, when Maduro's Order the the last uh, increment of the minimum wage has been 38 times. So the minimum wage has been increased 38 times. 38 times. Wow! In a little less than 20 years. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. More 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 than a, a 180,000 percent. Yes. Okay. 180,000 percent. More than that. And if you compare the Purchasing Power Parity. On May 1999, you you required to the 27 minimum wage for buying a, mini, a basic basket, okay? But today, on July 2017, you need a 5.7 minimum wage for buy one basic basket, and the same for for all for all the economic sect sectors, okay? Uh, the the economy ha has been destroyed for the these people. So you can raise wages all you want, prices go up faster. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's the problem. The productivity in our country is the, is decreasing faster and faster and the minimum wage is is increasing and you know productivity is decreasing and minimum wage in, increasing. The inflation is we, we have no inflation. We have hyperinflation. That's the truth. We have an hyperinflation. Uh, Professor Steve Hankers from the St. John's Hopkins University, uh, with his his index, the misery index of the world, mm -hmm. said that we are the most miserable country of the world for 2016, 2015, in respect to 2017. Okay, the economic freedom of the world, of the Fraser Institute, said that we are the least free country of the world. We 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 are least free than than some African, Zimbabwe, Republic of right. Congo, etc. And we in the nineteen seventy, in 1970, we we were the ten most most free country. In the nineteen seventy we, we were a uh, most free than right now the United States. The United yeah. States in this moment is the sixteen. We were the ten. In the nineteen seventy we were more more free than Singapore, than New Zealand. New Zealand was the the twenty the twenty uh, I don't remember and Singapore the th the thirty, 
Yeah. And now Singapore is the second and New Zealand is the third. So you see that that situation, it really is very sad. It's very sad. You you know about children, children undernourished, people eating garbage. Okay, and you have to to read some tweets of, of some recognized academics like Stiglitz, uh, other person like Bernie Sanders, uh, Pablo Iglesias, saying that the, the socialists of Venezuela is the good one. Yeah. So, sorry, as, yes. As they but, always say. <laughs> they, they always say the same. But I say for that people, come to Venezuela, go to Venezuela, but like a citizen common, because you, you, you don't find, you don't find toilet paper. Sometimes you don't, don't find toilet paper and other and other basic goods. You don't find food. And you are saying that the socialism is good. Yeah. One, th one thing is read about socialism. One thing is, is heard about socialism. Other thing is surviving in socialism. Socialism. A professor, a new university a professor in my, in my case, in the eight, uh, 1980s, Uh, a, a professor could, could buy one kilogram, I, I, I guess, two, two pounds of, of beef, approximately two pounds of beef, uh, with just 15 minutes of his salary. 15 minutes. Okay. Right now, he needs more than 18 hours. More than 18 hours. Mm. Okay? That's, that's impossible to believe. But we are, we are surviving in that situation. For that, we are... We are fighting, we are working on, on this project, on the Libertarian project in Venezuela. That is very difficult. Yes, it's very difficult. So many people say that we are crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are crazy. So many people say that... that even with what's going on now, they say you're yes, crazy. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Even, even now. Uh, it's it's uh, like y you go there and, and talk about these ideas, uh, you're going to have a lot of detractors and... and, and We have been insulted many times on, on the media. We have been also threatened and, and well, by, by both sides, by the way, by, by the opposition and by the government. Because the real problem we have in Venezuela now is that our opposition, I have to say it, is, is socialist as well. It's like kind of a lighter socialism. But it's the same. It's, 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 so it's like Democrats and Republicans here. Yeah, something like that. Something, <laughs> something like that. Well, let me just ask you, though, technically speaking, when you're approaching maybe 1,000% annual inflation, what do people physically do with their dollars, with their paychecks, with their bank accounts? I mean, the temptation would be to get as many physical goods as you can and have no money. Yeah. So wh what are people doing? Do they get their paycheck electronically generally? Do they get it in cash? And then what do they do? Uh, normally, well, uh, as you said, um, they, they try to buy as many things as, uh, as they can when they find them. Uh, another option they have is to buy Bitcoins. And if you, if you have, yeah, that, that was, I was very excited when, when you provided that le lecture here on, at Miss, on Mrs. University uh, about the economy of the Bitcoin, because that's one, that's one of the only options we have now, that, that one of the few options uh, people have to protect their, their money. And, and they're buying, they're buying Bitcoins. Uh, I think not to exchange Bitcoins for, uh, to buy or something like that, but just to hold that, uh, to hold that, that right. investment. I did it, in fact, I did it in January uh, I, with a little bit money, but I did it. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much what, what happens. Other people uh, have, for, for example, um, parents or relatives living uh, abroad. And they, uh, they exchange dollars, they send some dollars to these people living in Venezuela. They exchange uh, at the black market rate, of course, because there is a huge difference between the official rate and the black ma market rate. It's enormous, the difference. You exchange that and you get money. You get money to, to, to pay your, you know, your expenses, to buy things. And that's another option. And the other option is to have uh, pol political connections. So th that's that's the only way. But but th that's for for you know a, a real minority of the of the population. You have uh, political connections. You buy dollars at ten bolivars per 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 dollar, ten. Uh, I don't know ten, what, what's ten. the official rate. And then you sell it on the black market at ten at ten thousand, one thousand times uh, more. You know, and then you become rich. And that, that's creating a huge inflation as well, a huge, uh, you know. Uh, uh, and after you become rich, you, 
you go to the United States, that you say that the, the United States is the empire, say the, the Chavistas. But they love to be to yeah. live here yeah. in Florida. You, you 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 can find a lot of Chavistas living for with the corruption money that they they obtain during the during his living or during his work in in Venezuela. Well, talk about the uh, Banco Central. I mean, cl obviously they've had examples in Venezuela, mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe, in Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> um, do, does the media even talk about this, or do they sort of suppress this and, and imagine that they can deal with this uh, through central banking? Uh, I don't know. If you, if you, if you, uh, problem in Venezuela is that most of the intellectual uh, people, most of the uh, well, obviously politicians and, and all of them, are either Keynesians or Marxists. So they support they support the 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 Banco Central, the central bank. Is it cranking out physical money? Ah uh, yes, yes. It's crank, cranking out physical money too. The money supply is it has been increased many times during the last years. So so well, I think that started when we when we decided to create the central bank in 1939 because uh, it's not, as I said before, it's not uh, an exclusive policy of Chavez or, or of Chavez and Maduro. We had that from from many decades before. We started, you know, sowing the the seeds of our destruction. Uh, we started devaluing the currency, creating huge huge inflation. No matter what people suffer, and that's the reason why Chavez came into power. That's the reason why he was there and 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 did all he did. Of course, the monetary and exchange policies in Venezuela have, have been implemented by by Keynesians or Marx, Marxist uh, economists. Um, in Venezuela today, it's, it's difficult to understand that. But it, today, the, there are a lot of uh, of academics, well known with titles from excellent universities around the world here in the United States, Ivy League, etc. But they, I don't know what happened with the, that, that guys. But uh, I, I, I think that, I don't know, they, they have a... Uh, those guys say that, that it's important to maintain the control of the exchange. Okay. Yeah. So what? Why? Well, because because you, you, you can devalue to increase the productivity and the competitiveness to the... That is Marxism or, or Keynesianism. But when Luis or I say that that's not the, 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 the good way, that it's wrong, almost everybody say, hey, but Luis and you, who are? Who are you? Well, they, 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 they are guys with, with, with an academic credential, etc. that from other countries, etc. So the media, the media in the in Venezuela uh, support this 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 species. That's the big problem, and we are we we are fighting for this. We'll take a, a typical professor at a Venezuelan university. Maybe they went to school at the Ivy League or in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Are they generally supportive of Maduro, or are they generally in the opposition party? Or it depends. It depends. It depends. But but. Probably now they they will say uh, they 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 belong to the opposition, but but uh, I think the opposition is the same. I, I mean, it's the same uh, um, policy wise. Yeah, the, the policy wise. Yes, mm -hmm. philosophically, they 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 support socialism, uh, even though they they say they're not socialist. They are socialists. You see, for example, one of, one of the leaders of the opposition, his party belongs to the International um, Socialist. Socialist Organization. And his wife has declared publicly that they are socialists. So, <laughs> the Pablo well, Lopez. Yeah. He's, 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 he's the guy. He's talking and, about and, Pablo Lopez. And I'm, not, and I'm not saying we, we agree with what, what's happening to him because we think what, what the government did to him was an atrocity. I mean, he, he was just... Uh, uh, calling people to 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 protest, to go on the street to protest because our rights were were really diminished by by Chavez and Maduro, uh, and for that he was sent to prison and he was you know we do not agree with that. Sure. But I have to say that he's uh, uh, well we do not share his his thoughts he the, the way he thinks he, the way he uh, he says the economy will evolve under under his policies we do not think we we do not uh, support that. Uh, same happens with Capriles, with, which is the other uh, leader of the opposition. Uh, the same happens with some of 
all of the guys uh, in the opposition and and many intellectuals uh, they say uh, yeah I do not support the government I support the opposition but I I believe uh, you know in in Keynesianism Keynesianism uh, I believe that the central bank has the the solution for the for our problems I believe that uh, we we can keep very high tariffs and and so that to uh, I mean to favor our our own businesses here. Uh, no matter what happens with the people, at the expense of the welfare of many millions of people there, uh, let's keep quotas, for example. Let's keep and all that stuff. Let, let's keep. Uh, let's have control of the of the currency so that we can devalue when when oil prices uh, go down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The same, exactly the same policies we had before Chavez and during Chavez. So I don't see any any change. Um, uh, in, in the institutions they, they propose. We think that everybody that is in the mood, everybody, is socialist because they, they support uh, a lot of, of socialist pol policies like the, like the control of the currency. It's, this, is, this is very important. And, and, and we foc focus our, our speech in this in, in Venezuela, the monetary freedom. Venezuela, if, if Venezuela had the monetary freedom, we, we were not in this, in, in, in this situation. But uh, these academics uh, and other, other politicians, when we speak, we say we need monetary freedom as a constitutional right, they say, no, 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 no. We have to control it. Yeah. We have to control well, it. It sounds like what you need is a black money. A black market money. I know Bitcoin is the store of value, but also yeah. the U.S. dollar, Swiss francs, euro, whatever. And mm -hmm. uh, um, talk about other black markets that are operating. Government tries to suppress markets. Yeah. Black markets arise. What uh, it, it sounds like this is terrible, but the, the military I engages in black marketeering with food. Yes, it's correct. It's correct. You know, when when in an economy, there, there are a lot of countries. Immediately, the black market appears. Okay, black market appears when the controls uh, is in the are in, a, in an economy. So that is happening in Venezuela. You have black market for everything. Yes, for everything, for for medicines, for food, for for clothes, for everything, for dollars, for dollars, <laughs> for dollars, yeah, everything, yeah. for everything. You have black well, let, markets. Let, let's get back briefly to oil. Venezuela is one of the most, if not the most, oil rich country on the planet. A um, couple huge oil price declines in, I guess, 2009 and again just a couple of years ago. Um, do Venezuelans equate oil with wealth or do they equate it with a curse, as you mentioned earlier? I mean, it's nationalized for one. So talk about that. Yes. Talk about the state oil yes. company and its management or mismanagement. Yeah, I think well, uh, it's uh, our economy is totally dependent on on the oil prices, totally, totally, completely. Um, when and, and given the fact that it fluctuates, fluctuates, uh, it's uh, volatile. I don't know how to say it. Uh, our economy is volatile too, so it's it's you know attached to to what happens to to the oil prices. Um, normally, but part of the reason your economy is so linked to oil is because you haven't had markets to develop other things. Correct. You've had dictators, Correct. right? I mean, you, you, if oil's volatile, you need other industries. Correct. But if you if you ask that question to those intellectual guys in Venezuela, they will respond that, okay, we need the central bank intervene. We need we need to create more banks to help develop, you know, the agriculture or the or the iron industry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, no, you need to create a, a system that protects free markets, that protects private property. That's what we have to do. But they, they seem not to understand it or they don't want to understand it. And you need to privatize everything in Venezuela. You need to privatize all the state-owned companies, in, including PDVSA, PDVSA, okay? yeah. PDVSA, the state-owned oil company of Venezuela. But these guys don't want yeah, because they they prefer managing the control, the control. Okay, you know, in Venezuela, ever, ever in Venezuela, no, not just in in, in Chavez and in Maduro's uh, regimes. Uh, before Chavez, uh, the elites, political and economic elites, were who 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 real manage all these resources, and that's that they are they are looking for. Man, the commanding heights on his power. Okay, that's the 
that guy wants. And we, we are, we are saying in everything we are, no, no, sir, we need to privatize and we need to institutionalize the free markets. We, we need to protect the free markets. Well, I guess there's something about human nature. You'd rather be an, an elite in an impoverished country than give up any control to make the country wealthier. That's, that sounds like a sickness. But I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little shocked to hear that there isn't any real intellectual opposition. I mean, I guess you guys represent it to the extent it exists. There isn't as robust a libertarian uh, thought as, let's say, Brazil. Uh, well, I, I think. Well, we're we're trying to to do our best, you know, to for for that libertarian movement to to emerge. We we need a new leadership, definitely. With the leader, with this leadership we have now, we can maybe improve the situation if opposition gets into power. But but we are not going to solve the root cause of the problem, and the root cause of the problem is that. Our nation, um, as a society, we are socialists. We we ha we need to change that. We need to change that. Uh, libertarian movements. Um, it's really difficult in Venezuela. The 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 environment there is very hostile to to classical liberals and libertarians and all those guys to to come up. Um, but we're trying to do our best. It's really difficult without having uh, funding, with without having economic support from abroad, because in Venezuela it's almost it's it's really impossible to have economic support there, um, especially because many people don't believe in in free markets. So, so and 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 entrepreneurs and, and businessmen don't believe in that because they they have been all. Most of them ha have been protected all the time by the state, by the government. So, so that's the way they they have created their their own wealth. But they they haven't created wealth by competing in markets, by by being efficient, by by you know satisfying what the markets want. And, um, and that's a huge problem without having funds. But 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 we're trying to do our best. Uh, we have an um, Econitec, our think tank, is um, in charge to disseminate these ideals of freedom in Venezuela, trying to educate people, um, trying to create like a counterweight. But it's really difficult because we are very small now, uh, so far. We have an uh, we have made some alliances with an another nonprofit organization, uh, which is called Movimiento Libertad Venezuela, and they are our allies. And we're trying to do, and some other uh, movements are emerging too in Venezuela, but we are still very small. It's very, very difficult to, you know, to consolidate an effort uh, of such magnitude. Yes, and we have the shadow of the mood, that uh, the majority of the mood is trying to to appear uh, on the rest of the world, like the right, the right. Uh, wing of Venezuela and no they are not free market they they no promote the free markets they 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 promote uh, light socialism most of the of the people that we we had the opportunity to talk with with them uh, during the Mrs. University uh, of other countries said to us uh, hey but but we believe that the that uh, that um, Leopoldo Capriles uh, Maria Corina etc any of these uh, of these members of the MOOL were free markets. No, they are not free market. They are socialists, but they they say they, they want to to appear to the to the world like like free markets of right wing, because I think I think it's the way to to catch supporters, mm -hmm. to catch supporters uh, out of Venezuela. But they are socialist. When he says, by the way, when he says the mood, M U D is the is the opposition, is the way they right. they are called there. Right. So. But they are mood. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a, a big picture question. What, in terms of changing people's minds and the psyche of the country, what role do you think um, colonialism and Catholicism play in 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 current Venezuela? There's a long history there as being a Spanish colony and also being a majority Catholic country. Uh, well, I think uh, there is a paper from Dr. Hugo J. Faria with uh, who, he wrote a paper with uh, Dr. James Warney from from uh, Florida State University. They, I think, they pretty much capture what 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 you're saying. They they uh, our institutions were 
like a legacy of the colonies. Right. Uh, right. You know, we were from from when, when we were. I mean, from Spain, for example. Um, most of those colonies um, were like um, you know supportive of above all mercantilist institutions, and that's what we uh, that's our legacy. That's the, what we uh, got from them. Uh, it's really difficult to change because it's really rooted in the culture and the mind of people that, that we need to work with a state that, that provides us with everything, that, it, that, that protects our industry against, you know, the uh, competition, etc., etc. It's really difficult. And, and it's more difficult when all media and, and, and especially the education system uh, teaches that. I mean, they... they If you uh, if you happen to study, for example, economics in Venezuela, and you go to a university, e either private or public, no no matter, um, you're gonna study Keynesianism and Marxism from the beginning to the end, and maybe if you're lucky, you're gonna get you're gonna have like one or two free market subjects that are gonna be optional for you. If you want to take them, you take them. If you don't want to take them, don't don't take them. But you're gonna, I mean, how can we how can we expect a free market supporter to emerge from from that education system? I don't know. It's like uh, it's too difficult to fight against that. Yes, and w when when you ask about uh, Hayek, Mrs. Rothbard, and Rand, Syria, Hayek, Mrs. Hayek, Mrs. No, they are not economists. They are philosophers. Yeah, philosophers. <laughs> they, they, say, yes, yeah, they, they say that. They, they say philosophers. that. <laughs> <laughs> they say that because you have, an, you have know a lot of math yeah. in, 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 the, in their books, so they are philosophers, no economists. <laughs> yeah. Everything can be planned or put into a formula. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. And, and actually, I, I use mathematics. That was where one of my main worries when I came here last week. Uh, I asked many times the same question. Um, I use mathematics because yeah, because of my background, but I use it and we use it in our think tank to support the 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 theories or the hypothesis we're trying to you know to back up what we're saying, not not to not to create new theories or to predict some things and that stuff. And I think that's pretty compatible with the with the Austrian the Austrian uh, economics. We love the theory, the, the Austrian theory. We we, we think uh, it it. It has the solution for the problems in Venezuela. But that is the point, that the Austrian economics in Venezuela is, is, is not, is not, has been not made it, to, uh, and really the, the people need to know it, okay? Need to know it because that's the solution. That's the solution. I would, uh, Jeff, I would strongly recommend uh, um, your audience to, um, to read a paper from Dr. Hugo J. Faria, if you allow me to, to say it. Sure, we'll link to it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's called Hugo Chavez Against the Backdrop of Venezuelan Economic and Political History. It was published in the Independent Review, and it's great, great to understand our history, what we uh, presented in our, in our lecture. Uh, it's great. Uh, that's the, the philosophical uh, backup for, uh, f of our presentation. I strongly recommend it. Well, socialism has become a little more in vogue in the United States. Used to be a, a fairly dirty word, but now Bernie Sanders and some other people have brought that word out of the shadows a bit. Um, people in the U.S. and in the West say, well, Venezuela is not real socialism. Or they have a dictator, so it's not, it's not a true socialist society. What, what would you say to, them, to people who say, well, that could never happen here in the U.S.? Well, the same we said in, in Venezuela. No, no. Venezuelans... Never uh, seen the Venezuela destroyed by the socialism. Okay, Venezuela is, is not Cuba. That's what we said. Venezuela is not Cuba. Yeah, so the socialism here is going to work, not not the way it's working in Cuba because they have a dictatorship. The same the same thing. They have a dictatorship there, and and we have the one that works. Uh, that's very you know socialism is a, tr a transition to communism. And that's the way I see it. Uh, I think Hayek or Mises said that. Uh, it's just a transition to communism, and and uh, and we believe that socialism never ever works, no matter where you are. If it's Venezuela, if it's Norway or Sweden, or 
by the way, they're not socialist. Uh, that's a that's a myth. I I think that they're not socialist, but our politicians take them as examples. So, um, yeah, it never works. It's gonna get, you know, the same thing we 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 said uh, when Chavez the, during the first years of Chavez. This is the one that works. Look at the 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 welfare we have. He was a master of redistribution because of the high oil prices, and he controlled everything. He in fact, he, he didn't have, for example, the oil industry, PDVSA, our, our, our state-owned company. It's not, an efficient, it's not an efficient company. It's not a competitive company. He's not you know, trying to embrace more and more markets because they are efficient. No, it's because he belongs to a cartel uh, that manipulates prices and manipulates production uh, just to, you know, to, 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 for their benefit, for their own benefit. That's it. That's what PDVSA does and, and what has done during decades. So if we want to really if we really want to move to a to an efficient and competitive industry, uh, we'll have to privatize the company. We'll have to well we have a proposal in fact we have a proposal for 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 changing our institutions uh, along with uh, Movimiento Libertad Venezuela we 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 wrote some proposals. Um and when we're trying to disseminate the ideas there. So let's see what happens. Well, Luis Suocho and Dr. Rafael Acevedo, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank thank you for you coming you to Auburn. Thank you very Auburn. much, Jeff. And uh, people awesome. can get in touch with you through your Twitter feed sure. at, at Econ in Tech. It's E-C-O-N-N-I-N-Tech, T-E-C-H. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great weekend. And thanks, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Subscribe to Mises Weekends via iTunes U, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, or listen on Mises.org and YouTube.